Roll Tide and welcome back to Brian Denny Stadium. We're at the Advantage Center inside our podcast studio. I'm Roger Hoover, now joined by Crimson Tide basketball sophomore Mo Diabate. Fresh off a of Final Four run, you even got the Final Four shirt on. Roll mm-hmm. Tide. It's good to see you, Mo. Thanks for having me. Well, a fun freshman year for you in the Crimson Tide this past year, uh, not only having your transition to college basketball, but then the deep run in the NCAA tournament. What are you proud of the most when you think back to your freshman year? Um, Just learning everything I can from the guys and, you know, my teammates, um, and obviously making it to the Final Four. But, you know, it took it took practices, steps, you know. It took us day by day to get there. So, you know, that whole process right there was just, you know, that's what I just took in the most, you know. This team had to be really hungry to make a type of run that it did in March Madness. Even as you've been doing some workouts in June and July, do you still feel that intensity in the way this team is trying to work each and every day towards the season? Yeah, and, you know, our practices and workouts are extremely intense. Um, you know, like Coach said, it starts in June. You know, the first it's some days in June, you know, that's going to get us prepared for March and the SEC tournament, et cetera, so – yeah, so a lot of hard work at this time of the year. Uh, how about strength and conditioning? What's been your focus there with Henry? Um, I, I'm an explode group, so, you know, I've been working on, you know, being quicker, jumping higher. Um, you know, obviously I got a good frame, but, you know, I work on that a little bit as well, you know, work on my balance, stability. So, yeah. So when you're talking about jumping higher, is that a lot of box jumps, a lot of plyometric stuff? Uh, what does that look like? It's, it's a it's a mixture of a lot of things. Um you know, he had us, he got, you know, Henry, he's, he's very, you know, serious with his work. You know, he does a lot of research on this. So, you know, he, we just don't lift heavy weights. He tried to um do, uh, give us workouts that's going to translate to the court. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of mix, it's a lot of mix of different exercises. Henry Barrera, the strength coach for the Crimson Tide. Uh, it's pretty cool how much technology he uses, uh, especially mm-hmm. the sensors on you guys and practices yeah. or in games. Uh, was that something you'd seen before, and what kind of feedback do you get from that? Um, that, was, that was my first time um, coming to this program where I have used that kind of technology. Um, you know, it just tracks our player load, how much we run, how high we jump in practice. So, you know, I got I get some I get some good feedback, you know. Um, on practice days and stuff. Any of that surprise you at times? Be like, yeah, I didn't know yeah. if I had it that day or I had more yeah, than I thought yeah. I had. And honestly, it do surprise me, you know, seeing the amount of miles we've run in a week or in a, on, or in a practice. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, you don't just think, you don't think about it, you just do it. So, you know, seeing the results after you're like, wow, I really did this much. If you can remember how many miles are typically in a practice, maybe not around a game or anything like that. In a, in a practice, sometimes it could be like three miles four sometimes that's really good so yeah. again that's all part of the hard work uh, you're putting in to make sure the crimson tide ready to go for your sophomore season but let's back it up a little bit uh first of all where'd you grow up what got you into basketball um i'm from queens new york born and raised um what got me into basketball was my brother that's a year older than me nakuma he was playing he was playing basketball and he was really good when i was younger and I was living my I was living with my mother at the time, and he was living with my dad. So once I moved back with my dad to my dad's house, I was around my brother more, you know. And I seen like how how good he got in basketball, and like all the kids in the area, they was like, they was like, you know, he he's he's the one, you know. So he kind of got me into it because I was playing soccer at first. I was playing basketball, but it wasn't as serious as soccer. So once I seen how good my brother was, I was around him a lot. So I just had, I just adapted to playing basketball more. Pretty good soccer player too. Yeah, I'm I'm decent now. I bet I was better when I was younger, but I, I could still play a little. <laughs> do you still do some pickup or different things like that? Um, sometimes. Uh, you know, I come from a soccer family, so my brothers are always playing soccer. So sometimes I just hop in with them. You know. When did you have your growth spurt? Um, I actually grew, like, I didn't grow just at one time, like, it was like every year I would grow like two inches, a, an inch, um, so it was like, you know, throughout my, from my eighth grade year to, i say about like my junior year, I was just growing like an inch or two every year from that time on, you know, so I got to where I'm at now. And when you started getting into high school, how competitive was uh, basketball in New York? I mean, I think everyone thinks of it as the mecca of basketball in a lot of regards. Um, it was real competitive, um, especially 
playing varsity as a freshman, um, coming in like the guys they were more experienced than me. Um, they were they were like stronger than me, and they knew the game better than I did at that level. So it was it was competitive at first, but you know, as time progressed, you know, I, I caught up to those dudes, you know, and it was all we was all playing at the same level. <laughs> Is that a pretty good feeling, knowing that okay, I may be one of the youngest guys out here, but I'm beating some you know juniors and seniors yeah, yeah. and much older players. That always, that always been my mentality since from the, from like the second and third grade when I was playing soccer with the older dudes. Like I knew I was better than them. I just had to I just had to you know get the get the opportunity to show everyone that I was and I did. So I stayed with that mentality always, you know. And I'm sure it started from having a great older brother, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. Uh, when did you start to hear from a lot of colleges? When did that start to get more on your radar as you were at Putnam Science Academy? Um, it started like a little, about like a few months before I got to Putnam. Um, it was during COVID time. You know, everyone was home uh, at the time, and it was a tournament in New York. And it was like, uh, that was like the first tournament where everyone started coming outside again. And I played, I played like two games. I had like, I had, I had like great stats and it was people that started to come outside and stuff and they started to see me, you know, because they haven't seen anyone play in a long time because of COVID. So once I, you know, came out, I did what I did and it was around my like junior year where I started, you know, picking up offers from different schools. And looking at your high school career as well, uh, you guys are very successful at Putnam Science Academy. Uh, mm-hmm. What made that a special team you're part of? Um, we had a we had we had a lot of talent both years that we won a national championship. It was like it was so much different talent. Um, different guys going to uh, d- different Division One schools. Um, you know, and we know we all was hungry. You know, we was doubted a lot, and we all had a hunger to us. Like like we gotta win this. Like you know what I'm saying. Both years, so that was that was really special. And then you kept it going a year later at Alabama. I mean, it sounds the exact same. Yeah, it translated <laughs> pretty well. It translated pretty well. Mm-hmm. So after your senior year uh, time as well on the EYBL circuit, how meaningful was that towards your college career? Oh, the EYBL helped me a lot. That's why I got a majority of my offers um, from the EYBL to the NBA Top 100 camp. From like that month or so, like that, that, helped, that helped me a lot. That's why I picked up Alabama from – um, the NBA Top 100 camp, and they first see me play at the EYBL um, in, in in Indiana. So that that helped my that helped my career a lot. Um, I picked up a lot of schools, you know, that I schools that I, I you know I always wanted since a kid. So yeah, that that helped me tremendously. Where were you kind of thinking you were heading before EYBL? Like if you hadn't played in that circuit, where do you think you may have ended up? I know I always wanted to be like where I'm at now, mm-hmm. like a good school, a good program, you know, and playing at a high level. You know, I was I had a certain kind of ignorance to me, like I I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm I'm gonna get here. So I never I never doubted myself, like oh you're not gonna get here, you know. I know if I just stay true to myself and do what I do, I'm gonna get there. Was it Coach Oates that first saw you at that prospect camp or another assistant who started to first talk to you about Alabama? Um, it was Coach Hassan. Brian Hassan, um, I think he he the one that first seen me. Um and he started recruiting me. Oates was he he was also did a good job recruiting me, so yeah. What'd you like when you talked to those guys and went started to learn a little bit more about Alabama? Um, they was they was kinda like straightforward and like the plan that they had, it, it made sense. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, and it was like they wasn't, you know, trying to like just sell me this and that. They told me what it was. If I was to come, this is how it's going to be, you know. So that kind of, you know, really altered my decision, I'll say. Did they show you a lot of film and show you like yeah. different, you know, comparisons, uh-huh. how you can fit in the offense yeah, and defense? They, they showed me that, the offense, um, my player comparison. They And, you know, they did a good job just – you know, show me, show me everything, and t- telling me everything I need to know. So, yeah. Did you get a chance to come here before you made your decision? Yeah, yeah. I came, I came on a visit. Uh, on the football team, they was playing Texas, Texas A and M. So that was. I, I also had a great visit too. So that, that kind of what, um, also you know, made me make my decision as well. 
What do you remember most? What was really fun that weekend you guys got to do? Um, I met Nick Saban. I met him on game day. That was special. Um, you know, just talking to him and taking all the knowledge I can. Um, and just just being with the guys, I seen how close they were together, all the players and stuff. Um, and that kind of made me like, oh, all right, I see how it is over here. Mm -hmm. That's really good. So you get to signing day, uh, and you make the decision with that Alabama cap on. Mm -hmm. I saw the live stream of it. How meaningful was that day for you and your family once you made your decision to go to Alabama? Man, I, I was happy. Um, you know, just knowing that I could go to school for free and not having to worry about that. Um, it was a, it was a great feeling. And also my recruitment process, it was kind of like, it was kind of tough for me, you know, just, you know, talking to different schools, you know, and all of that. So when I when I committed, I was just relieved. I was like, yo, you know, I'm a step closer. And then you get to Alabama, and then, uh, like you said, the work has to begin. I mean, yeah. and Alabama was coming off a great season the year before, mm -hmm. SEC champions, high seed in the NCAA tournament. Uh, what was most important for you once you started to make your uh, first workouts in Crimson and start to get to know your teammates and coaches? Um, it, it was it was it was good, honestly. When I first came, um, uh, Javon Javon Conley, JQ, he was here the first week. I like. You know, I was here before I got surgery and everything. So just playing with, like, guys like that that I, you know, seen, like, growing up, those are guys I've seen play a lot. So, and the guys that, like, we look up to. So just even seeing that right there, I'm like, oh, wow, like, this, 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 is, this is dope, you know. And then you get some really talented teammates on last year's team, uh, starting with guys like Mark Sears, uh, Grant Nelson, Aaron Estrada. I mean, the list can go on and on. But just uh, seeing how those guys went about their work, did that really teach you how to be a college basketball player? Yeah, um, especially Aaron. He he, Aaron is always in the gym, like always in the gym. So that's one thing that I picked up from him. Um, you know, at the time he was there, you know, he's always in the gym. Like no matter what happens, he's always in the gym. And obviously guys like Mark as well. He he worked he worked very hard. Um so yeah, I that's what I picked up from those guys, how hard they work and you know, they had a certain routine, consistent routine and stuff. So yeah, I picked that up from them. Season begins, you guys are able to get some wins, a lot of them at home here in Tuscaloosa, went down the Emerald Coast Classic as well, but then in December, there was a really tough three-game stretch, Purdue, mm -hmm. Creighton, Arizona. What did you guys learn from those three games? We learn after them games, like, when adversity hits, we got to stay together. Like, no matter what happens, like, we got to stay together, you know. And I felt like what made us lose those games was probably because, like, we was thinking about the last game. You know, going to the next game, like, so once we learn, like, you know, next, like, you know, next play, um, you know, next game, whatever the case may be, I feel like that helped us. That helped us a lot, even going into the uh, SEC tournament, like, from, from those games we lost, like, we learned, we learned, like, next play, next game, whatever happened, you know, we just got to stick together. How much did that pay off in March Madness with the great it, run? It, it helped us a lot. It really, it really helped us a lot. Um, you know, even when adversity hit, some of those games, like the first game, we were down. Um, versus versus Charleston, you know, and we we remember like Mudita, stick together, next play. Don't worry about next play. You know, just positive energy coming from the guys on the bench, the guys on the court. You know, everyone was just bought in, so that helped us a lot. You bring up uh, the concept of Medita, you know, having joy for your teammate's success. Coach Murphy got to talk to you guys about that. Uh, what was it like getting to know him, and how meaningful was that message that he shared with his team? Um, that that's, that was I, I like Coach Murphy. Um, you know, he's a good guy. He 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 vouches good about me. Um, so that's that's why that's one reason why I respect him. But that that Medita thing right there it made us it made us closer. Um, you know, made us. Even though we probably already knew it, but it made us like remind us of like like we brothers. We gotta have each other backs at all times. So, um, you know, cheer your brother on if he does if he does a good play, get a three or a dunk. You know, just have bring the energy to the team to him. You know, it's it's only gonna help us. You certainly did that as a freshman. Had some good performances, including the Mississippi State game here at home. 14 points, believe nine rebounds. You got the hard hat uh, for your blue collar play. How meaningful was it to get your first hard hat? 
it was it was amazing because you know the first about twenty games went by. I seen I seen all all of the other guys get it, you know, and I know how hard they work. So and they know how hard I work too. So just getting that right there it was like, all right, man, I gotta do it again and again and again because <laughs> the feeling was good. So I'm like, I gotta keep doing this. Yeah, the celebration for the hard hat in the locker room when we see the Aaron Hepps videos afterwards, it's almost bigger than the game celebration, it is, right? It is. You know, you got guys competing to get that in the game, and it just makes us play hard on the court. Was it easy for you to kind of pick up how intense you have to play defense? So did you like that from the start, or did it take a little bit to kind of get in that mentality? Um, I say um, the learning the system at first, because when I, when I got on the court, when I first started playing, like practicing, it was it was like about like in around mid October or so, because I was I had surgery, so I was out. So me just coming back and trying to pick up with the other guys and stuff, it was it was hard. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard for me. Um, you know, I was moving a little slower. I wasn't as athletic. I wasn't as fluid because I was out for like about for like four months or so. So. It was it was tough, but once I picked it up, it just became natural flow. Once I got in better shape and stuff, it became like second nature. And we really saw that again during the NCAA tournament as well. You mentioned the comeback win against Charleston, and then you really impacted the Grand Canyon game in the second round by scoring the majority of Alabama's points down the stretch. How did you want to impact the game? Uh, what made that a great performance for you? Um, I just stayed ready, honestly. Um, you know, I just let the game come to me. I didn't force anything. Um, it's almost like it was it was meant to happen. Like you know, I was in the right spots. Um, I made all my layups, made my free throws, um, and I was locked in. I was like fasting as well, so that gave me that gave me like an extra boost of like just locking it and energy. So I just I just let the game come to me, and I was just flowing. I like I felt it once I got my first layup. I'm like, all right, I'm I'm on to something. Yeah, you mentioned you were fasting during that time, during Ramadan, I believe, Mohammed Wagi was as well. Uh, how'd you guys uh, stay hydrated or uh, the proper nutrition? I know Amanda put up together a really good plan for you guys to help support you during that time. Yeah, so basically, we would wake up at um, 3 in the morning, perhaps, and, you know, have a little snack, you know, and then we would go back to sleep. Or we would stay up to like, about, like, Four four forty perhaps, and we would, you know, eat our food, hydrate a lot, like a lot of hydration. Um, you know, we try to eat as much as we can, you know, so so we could be good the next day. So we would we was constantly doing that every day, you know, because we went like sixteen hours without eating, seventeen hours without eating. So we try our best to hydrate and get them get as much nutrition in our body as we can. So. Amanda, she did a real, she did a real good job helping us with that, preparing our food. And when it was time to eat, you know, <laughs> that was the best feeling. When it's time to eat, well, didn't the fast end like during the end of that Grand Canyon game or near the tail end of one of those games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it was uh, it was Charleston. Gotcha. First it was game. Charleston. Yeah. It was about like it was like four minutes left of the game where we got to break our fast. So yeah. And that was part of a long t trip for you guys out west. Uh, first Spokane, then to Los Angeles. Yeah. Got to come home for like a second, <laughs> and then two right days, back to Phoenix. Two days, the most. <laughs> did you guys, I mean, even though you'd been together for a whole year at that point, how much more did that bring you guys so close together? That long trip. It made us. It made us closer because, like, we was we we haven't been on the road for that long together, so it's like. If you don't, if you're not used to talking to this person, you're gonna have to be used to it because you're around each other all day, all day long. So that kind of, and we we didn't have no distractions like that. It was just like basketball, you know. So we got to connect on a deeper level, you know. Especially we all had the same goal. Everyone wanted to win. It. Everyone wants to win a national championship. So you know, we seen how everyone was locked into this goal. So we're like we're gonna do it for this. We're gonna, we're gonna do it for, to get a national championship. Beat North Carolina, Sweet 16, beat Clemson for the Elite Eight. Uh, how special was that celebration, knowing you were going to the Final Four? Man, we, that, was, that was one of the happiest moments I got in college right there. You know, just knowing, just knowing you're one, one game away from being in the national championship game. 
Yeah, it was it was it was crazy, man. I I had so much people, you know, text me, call me my family, you know, congratulating me and stuff, and it was it was surreal. Yep. Did you have a lot of friends and family make it to Phoenix? Yeah, I had I had I had a few I had a few family and friends that made it here. Um my brother came out, one of my older brothers came out to support me and stuff. Um yeah. Yeah, really cool that Alabama gets to experience the program's first ever Final Four. I got to ask you, what was it like playing basketball really in a stadium designed for football? A very large venue, largest I'm sure you've ever dreamed of playing. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't even look real, honestly. Like, if we see fans so far away, I'd be like, yo, is that, is that an actual person up there? <laughs> like, it was it was crazy. That's the most that's the most amount of people I played in front of. Um, it was so real. It was so loud in there, you know. But it was it was a great experience. Um, yeah, I hope I hope we could do it again this year. Absolutely, a tough loss to UConn. Obviously, they go on to win the national championship. What was the message from Coach Oates to the team uh, once that game was done? Coach Oates, he was, you know, he didn't go in there mad, you know, that we lost and stuff. Um, he went. He had good spirits. He was like, you know, you guys play hard. Um, you know, we tried our best to win this game. You know, uh, I love and appreciate each and one of you guys, all, all of you guys in this locker room, you know, for helping us get to this point. At the end of the day, it's it's a loss, but look at it as a blessing. Um, so that's pretty much the things he was saying and stuff. So now uh, you get back to work. Uh, you're ready to go for your sophomore season. We've talked about some of the work that happens in June and July. Uh, how is this team coming together? I mean, still some familiar faces coming in uh, from last year's team like you, but how about the newcomers? Uh, what do you liked about this group? Um, we got some guys that play hard. I'll say that. Um, like LeBaron, he plays very hard. Uh, Chris, you know, Cliff. We got, we got a bunch of guys that play hard, and we get along off the court as well as on the court. So, you know, that's that's special. That's like, you know, that's like one of the most important things you need in a team. You know, guys that get along and have a good bond. So we pretty much have that already. So and on the court, you know, it's just we play we play for each other. So I got a good feeling about it. What's it like going up against Cliff in practice? Pretty physical presence. <laughs> yeah, he's Cliff you know, Cliff is a dog. <laughs> Cliff is a dog. I love playing against him, though. Um, it's, it's like a challenge, you know, especially when I got to finish around him a little bit. You know, also, he don't want to foul me, so he don't want to, you know, play too hard defense. So it's, it's – I love playing against Cliff. He's – you know, he makes me better. That's pretty good that he's already thinking at this point of the year about, you know, defending without fouling. That, mm -hmm. That's a really good mindset yeah, to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, what do you guys like to do uh, away from Coleman Coliseum to have fun, especially during the summertime? Um, we pretty much just hang out. Um, we go to we go to each other house houses, or you know we just we just chill. We play the game together. Um, we just we just vibe with each other. You know, we could do it all day. Like you know, yeah. That's really good. Everybody in Tuscaloosa is excited, of course, for the school year to begin, uh, but especially football season. Uh, how much do you like going to home games here at Brian Denny Stadium? I love it, actually. You know, when I came on my visit, I was with um, the, the players on the team at the point, and it was like halftime, and they were all trying to leave. I was like, I was like, yo, why, why y'all trying to leave? Like, the game was fun. They was like, yo, we, we, we've been to these games multiple times. We're not trying to stand here all day. I'm like, come on, bro. Just... Just let's just wait. Let's just leave at the end of the game. Come on, you know that just tell you like how much, how much you know. I like going to the games in person. You know the energy is just, the atmosphere is just different. So and Alabama is really good. Yeah, I mean, we're <laughs> we're a good team. Like you can't beat that right there. We made some uh, friends on the football team. Yeah, I got I got a few friend, a few people I'm cool with on the football team. That's good. Who are they? Who are you gonna be rooting on this year? Oh, I'm rooting for everyone, but um, I'm rooting on Jahad Campbell. Um, uh, Nicole Bettnard, um, rest of the guys on the team, Jay Mill, all of them. Yeah, we're excited. I'm, I'm They're about fun. to get going. Uh, we're excited for you guys as well. Uh, what's going to be most important the rest of the summer? And then once we get in that preseason work before we see you guys in November. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
hard work. I mean, what else is going to be really most important for you all? But and between now and then, most important, um, I'll say, most important, just stay the course. Um, do what we've been doing. Um, just bonding, consistent, consistent workouts, uh, good communication, playing the game with each other, stuff like that. Um, I feel like that's gonna be. That's gonna be like the main thing, cause we have the talent. We have the talent already, you know. If we get our chemistry off the court, it's gonna help us on the court. So if we just continue to do that, we're gonna be fine. We well, can't wait to see it. Well, Mo Diabate, thank you so much for the time you've given us here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Uh, best of luck with everything coming up. Uh, we'll see you again in the fall. Roll Tide. Thanks for having me. Roll Tide.